So, I'm here at the Intel Hackathon and I found two Intel guys who look like real nerds and I want to ask some questions to them. So let's switch the screen, flip it. Hello. Hi. So what's your name? Christian. And you? Okay, so you are working at Intel in Munich? No, we are actually working in Intel Guys, so that's Poland side. Okay. And we are from Platform Security Division at Intel, so basically we do some security related stuff. Okay, so can you tell me more about the security things you are doing at Intel? The ones we can talk about. <laughs> of course, only those. So, actually there's a lot of technologies that are related to the platform security. Because, well, security should be part of the whole uh, ecosystem and we think about it as an integral part of, of our product. So, if uh, you think about technologies we deal with, that would be, for example, SGX, so Secure Guards Extensions. Uh, that would be EPID, so the um, authentication mechanisms for the uh, for the devices platforms or IoT devices uh, that would be device attestation and uh, yeah topics like that okay so tell me more about epic what what's so unique and great about epic so epic is so the, the full name is enhanced privacy id uh, and it's in basically group signature scheme with some additional features uh, that allow to use uh, member revocation or signature based revocation and some kind of selective linkability of, of, of the signatures. So you can think about it as a group signature with some extra features. Okay, so how does it preserve privacy? So the privacy is preserved because it's a group signature. So if you have like a number of members in a group, then you can know that you know someone from that group signed the message, but you cannot identify uh, which uh, member of the group actually signed this message. So it's also a difference between EPID and other group signature schemes that in some of the other group signature schemes you have this opening mechanism when the group manager can actually uh, open the signature and tell, okay, that was the member that signed the group. In EPID it's not possible, so the privacy is, is preserved by the virtue of, of actually you know, having those multiple members. Is that based on RSA, DSA or some asymmetric cryptography algorithm? So it is asymmetric cryptography, but the mathematics behind it is a little bit more complex. So, but uh, it's mostly based around elliptic curves. Yes, yes. So it's, uh, well, the mathematical structures that are used are, are pairings over, over elliptic curves. Okay, that's a similar one which is used in uh, AES. Uh, so this is the closest analogy is ECDSA because you have also elliptic curves there, but here we have a little more sophisticated uh, structures built over the, the, the elliptic curves. Is that an open standard, open <laughs> algorithm, or is that something which uh, yes, Intel doesn't disclose? Intel disclosed this technology. It's an open standard. First version of Intel Epic was standardized a couple of years ago by ISO. Okay. And, and you can also read uh, scientific papers. Uh, IACR Reprint Archive contains a good paper that, that explains everything in all the mathematical details. Okay. Does it depend that the private key is physically stored in some hardware device of Intel? Yes. That, that's the most important part. You have to preserve the security of this key. So you have to store it securely and nobody should be able to extract it from the from the platform and that's kind of a big challenge in IoT space because devices are not in data centers but in the field so when the device is in the field you always have to consider that someone may come to it physically and tamper with it that's why Intel has a number of security technologies in its platforms like Intel Management Engine that can store such secrets securely and it's basically a root of trust in the hardware Okay, is it like a smart card where the private key is somehow protected by a means of like physical smart protection? Or TPMs, trusted platform modules, which are okay. commonly used in our laptops. Uh, if you have BitLocker, it's probably using TPMs. So it's that kind of technology. Uh, physical chips that can actually store the private key securely. It's, it's non extractable. Okay, can I play around with that on my Intel based MacBook as well? Well, you can play with the technology itself, with the mathematical operations. Uh, Intel produced an SDK which is open source. You can download it for free from 01.org. 
just Google Epic SDK and you will find it. Uh, but you cannot uh, play on your Intel platform with the key that is stored in your platform securely. That's only reachable for the code that has been yes. authorized by Intel to run inside the trusted execution environment. Okay, so what's Otherwise, because anyone could use your key to sign something, right? And that it would, would compromise useless. the security of your platform. Of so course. Okay. You shouldn't be but okay. Intel embeds uh, Epic private keys in every platform for the last nine years. We already issued two and a half billion of those keys. So okay. it's a pretty major technology. Okay. So what would be the cheapest and easiest way for me to start with the real hardware protecting the private key from disclosure? Well, sometimes in IoT you can consider your whole platform as trusted execution environment. For example, if you have a chip which can be programmed only once and nobody is able to extract the firmware easily, you can generate your private key and embed it into the fir your firmware also. Okay. If I want to know more, are there any tutorials which, which you provide? Well, Epit comes with Epit SDK comes with great documentation, so you can read it to get some higher level information about Epit itself, not just the API manual. Uh, also, there are some white papers around Epit, so if you Google the name, you will find them for sure. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank now you let's much. have dinner. Yes. <laughs> dinner.